What's up guys, Shane here for the 3D Printing, and today I'm gonna to do my official review here on the Crowley Ender 2 and go over all the mods that I've done on the printer. Welcome back guys. So I've done a lot of mods of this printer and you've seen some of them in other videos. I just haven't really talked about them yet. Well, this video, I'm gonna go over all of them and some of them are completely necessary some of them are just things that I wanted. So we'll start with, I don't know, there's no real order here. I'm just gonna go through them. And if you guys like any of these, I'll be sure to put all the links down in the video description. So if you wanna check them out, some of them I've created, some of them I've gotten off Thingiverse, and some of them I've butchered. So check all those out. So of all the mods on here, the most critical and the most important one, I think, is the part cooling fan. The Ender 2 does not come with one. It has the same type of front uh, carriage that the, you know, but the CR10s come with, but there's no part cooling fan on it. Weird. So we're gonna add one. It prints really well without it at a slower pace because you just get time for cooling. But once you add this on, it's great. So I took the mount for the CR10 and flipped it around and made some changes so that it works on the Ender 2. The reason why I had to change it around a little bit is because when I'm home, look right here, it's really close to where I have this LCD display at. If I would have the fan over here, it would in fact hit against this LCD display. If I didn't have this, the stock one would have been fine, but I wanted to have this, so I flipped it around. Now this adds a 5015 fan right onto it. You just run it down into the fan. Uh, there's, a, there's actually ports already on the board, it's just not wired up, and just run some wire down to that. Plug it in and you're off to race. It's a 12 volt fan. It's PWM enabled because if you're gonna set it in your slicer. So I usually run it at around 80 to 90% for PLA, 100% on bridging. So you kind of get your settings in there, but it's great. It prints right onto the nozzle. It is fully adjustable. So you can slide it up and down a little bit just to get it just above your nozzle, get that right setting. So it's not blowing on the heater block, just on the tip of the nozzle. And you're off to the races with that. It also does include cable support. So your cable will actually be routed in through here and you're gonna use a zip tie to zip it to there and it gives it nice and stable. You're not going about fatiguing the cable at all. And it keeps your Bowden tube nice and straight as well. And it works really well. So I really enjoy that one. And to note, everything in here is printed in PLA. It's been working just fine for the several months that I've been using this. I haven't noticed any issues at all. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but for me, PLA works just fine. Now, you can't just print this out and be complete. You need a new mount for your 40 millimeter fan. You can use the stock 40 millimeter fan that comes with the printer, but it's a little loud in my opinion. So I swapped it out for the 40 millimeter by 10 millimeter thick Noctua fan. You could use the 25 millimeter as well. It is quieter and pushes a little bit more air, but this is what I had, so that's what I'm using. And this is a very quick switch out. I actually ended up putting on a little DuPont connector so I can make it hot swappable in the future, but the original one is not. It runs all the way down to it, so snip, add in the cable connectors, and you're off to the races for that one. This screws in using the stock bolts, works with this one. Someone reported that it doesn't, but for mine it did. Your mileage may vary, and if it doesn't, you just use a little bit longer of the M3 screws to hold that in. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the LCD. Now, the LCD is just to bring it up. I didn't like looking straight down at it. It just was weird. I liked it having at a little bit of an angle, and add a little angle here for the knob as well. Very simple print. Uh, I had to make a few little adjustments to it. I ended up just printing it out and then drilling my own holes for it in order to get it to work out how I wanted it to. So. You know, again, mileage may vary for that for you, depending on what cooler mount you're using for a part cooling fan. But that, and I'm just printing that out, drilling my own holes, called it a day, and there it was set in. The four bolts come that are holded into the stock, you know, a little box here. You're using, reusing all of that. You just need one, two, three extra bolts in order to hold it down to the actual chassis head top. All right, so next we're just gonna go turn it around here. We're gonna go up top. So this is a new spool holder for your spools. Now this one is not quite as wide and it is longer to accommodate those smaller, fatter spools. So Catalyst has that, um, some Repco filament is that way, um, Robo 3D filament is that way, the old Forgitech filament was that way. Uh, there's lots of different ones that use it. Uh, to whether they do or not today is a different story, but lots of ones that I've used have those shorter, fatter rolls with a very small hole that actually mount to your spool holder. And the stock one is humongous. I don't like it at all. So this brings it down about 20 millimeters less in diameter 
20 minute with skinnier. And then I'm just using the stock thumb screws. You can add the new, you can put new ones on her. I'm sorry, the, the nuts here. Uh, you can 3D print them or use the stock ones. Stock works just fine for me. Coming around here to the extruder, we have a little wheel here. So this is an assist. And I love this because it makes it so much easier to extrude your filament. If you just want to crank it in a little bit more, you know, it's easier to fill it this way than kind of hold the arm and then try and push it in. It just gets weird. I just get it bit in there and then I just, Turn it, turn it, turn it till it comes out. And then once it heats up, I can extrude a little bit of filament or when the print's done and I want to remove it, I can just quickly turn this instead of trying to grab it and be weird about it. I, this is a great thing. This is made by Devin over at Make Anything. Great print, love it. Then we have this little cable and filament guide. Now, this filament guide, I use the three millimeter one just in able to pass the filament through. It doesn't work out so well. Use the four millimeter one and use a piece of PTFE tubing in there. I've actually worn through this one all the way. So I didn't really like that, but it is great for holding your cable still. It keeps it nice and like rigid so that it's not like flopping all over the place. It's not gonna get caught on anything. And again, it adds a guide. So once your filament spool comes down and loops in, it goes in there a nice solid path. But again, use a four millimeter one and add a piece of PTFE tubing in there. Also on this side down here, we have an adjustable Z end stop. I was getting a little bit inconsistent on the Z. I needed to add a little bit of space because I'd made some changes under the printer, which we'll talk about in a second. I needed to raise the Z a little bit. So one of the thingiverse found this adjustable Z end stop, pushed it all the way up, mounted it to it, and it is perfect now. And finally on the back side up here, we have a little LED mount. So again, I just ran this. There's two strips of LEDs in here. They're just the 50-50 LEDs uh, I added in there. So, and then I just ran the cabling along with the extruder motor. And then I ran the cabling here with the X motor. So it just runs down right into there, straight to the power. So as soon as you power on the printer, this will light up and you'll be able to see your build plate really nice. Also here on the back, well kind of like underneath is, this is a bed wire support system. So it kind of runs a little sideways. Let me pull this out, talk about this part in a minute. It's really hard to see, but it runs to this bolt and to the front side bolt. So it's two points holding on and it zip ties onto your cable. This just ensures that you don't have any cable fatigue from your bed moving back and forth. And that helps out quite a bit. Next we have some thumb screw, you know, pieces that go over the thumb screws for the bed. You can only use it on the front two or the front right and the left side one. This back one you can't use, otherwise it would run into your Y end stop. So that's gonna be a problem. So you just have to use that one by hand. It's not terribly bad, uh, but it, you know that's something that I would say to change out. I also changed out the springs with extruder springs. You can pick them up for a dollar on wish.com. Very simple to use, or you can just pick up an extra bucks on Amazon, get them in two days if you want your prime shipping. I chose the cheaper route and I got a pack of 10 for a dollar. Can't beat that with a stick. And I've swapped all them on here so the bed is much more rigid. It's pretty loose when you first get it because the springs are pretty crappy. Final look here at the bottom, there's two parts here. So there, this is my custom enclosure that I've made for the printer. And by adding this, I was able to add in my own power switch which the printer doesn't have. Once it's plugged in, it's just plugged in and on. And there's also no you know, you know, protective cover for the power supply, which I really think there should be. Then I added these feet. So these feet stock work great if you don't put your power supply underneath, but I did mod them a little bit so that there's space in the cutout for them so that you can mount this in there. And then finally you notice in there is a Noctua fan blowing out. So it's sucking air through the front and the sides on this, pulling the air through, blowing it out the bottom and it keeps the power supply nice and cool and it is dead silent. Love that. And one of the final little things is just this little tray. So someone made this, there's two different versions. One kind of like goes into the extrusion. Uh, I think you can put it on one of the sides, but uh, for this one, this one slides in the front here, just like so. It is low enough so that these thumb screws do not touch it at all. But that's actually where I keep all my tools for this printer. That's the hard thing about printers. They don't have any storage to them. But by this, I can have the wrenches, a few extra bed, um, well, I actually didn't mention these. So a few extra parts, extra screws, Allen wrenches, things like that are all in here. I did forget these little caps. Now these caps go on top of your springs so that they don't rub into the bed and score it. So there's a big issue, I think about a year ago, with, oh, who was it? Was the Wanhow printers? That the screws were wearing through the protective material over the PCB heated bed. They were touching the PCB heated element and shorting out and causing sparks in the printer. Sparks, 3D printing, flammable surfaces, not a good thing. 
I've never seen that be a problem, but because I did use different springs than what the manufacturer sent with the printer, I wanted some protection. So I found these again on Thingiverse and printed those out. I have all three in here. Actually, I print out several, but I'm actually using one now because the other two, the, uh, the bed sub wire support, adds that type of insulation or that, that layer between the spring and the heated bed. So I don't have to worry about those scratching that at all. All right, and the last thing that I did on this printer is on the X and Y motor, I added stepper dampers. So I did a video discussing about NEMA 17 stepper dampers and what they can do for your printer. They absolutely help make this printer dead silent. So between changing out the fans, for quieter fans, including the power supply fan, which is very, very loud, adding in these stepper dampers, it's a dead silent machine. It runs super well. I normally don't even know that the printer is running half the time unless I look over and see that it is actually printing. Now I will say the stock power supply does add a little bit of power fluctuations. The LEDs are not on all the time. They kind of flicker a little bit. Someone's talked about that. I'm using the, the input power from the power supply. It's not running off of a separate switch or anything like that. Maybe if I was conditioning it different or if I tried a different power supply in this, that might work. But using the stock one, I have seen that flicker in the LEDs. And again, other people have reported this as well. If that bothers you, look into changing that out. Otherwise, you'll have to deal with it. And that's it, guys. So I did these mods because I wanted to improve the printer for me. I tell people only put mods on a printer that you know that you need. You really do need a part cooling fan on this, not gonna lie, there's no way around that. You get better prints with a part cooling fan, period. Especially when you're printing with PLA, which this is mainly a PLA printer for me. Uh, I've done a little bit of PETG, but uh, I have not really done too much. This is just a PLA beast for me, so that's what I really run in it. And that part cooling fan makes parts come out so crisp, it's just awesome. So a few issues people have with this printer, I'll talk about this as well. Uh, this bed surface is amazing. If you get parts to stick to this you know, too well, you're printing too close to the bed. There is a fine line between good layer adhesion on your first layer and poor layer adhesion, and you have to find that, that area that works for you. I normally live adjust on the three uh, thumb screws on here just to get that perfect layer all the way around. That's why I do two or three skirts around the print, then I start the print. That way I ensure that I'm getting a flat bed surface and the proper offset that I want for the print. I don't think an ABL is needed on a printer this small. 140 by 140, not a big printer. You can hand manual level that, and if you can't, you shouldn't be leveling. Uh, the three point system is a little weird. Uh, I might do a separate video on that, and if that comes out, I'll link it here, but otherwise, you just kind of need to play with doing each over each screw, just like you would the four points. You'll get it. It's, it's a little tricky, but you will figure out how to get it quite well. And once you do, it prints great. As I said, so some of these mods I think are necessary. Some of them were just necessary for me. Again, this printer sits a little bit lower. I hate leaning over the printer like this. I wanted to have an LCD screen on it. Also, if I have it higher, right now it's on a lower desk over here or a lower shelf. If I have it higher up here, this also makes it easier to see as it adds it to a little bit of an angle. I wanted the feet and the power supply because I wanted this to take up the smallest amount of space it could. The printer isn't even as wide as I am and it takes up very little build space and or I should say desk space and when the bed comes all the way back, it doesn't extend. The wires come out further from the power supply than they do from the heated bed which is very different than most printers, like the CR10 printers, the print bed goes way back off the back of the frame of the printer. This barely goes outside of it, it just goes past the motor. So you need a very small amount of bed space once you throw the power supply underneath, and for me that is critical for all the different printers I have. It might be critical for you, so say this table that I use for my YouTube channel, is only the desk space you have, and you wanna have your printer here. You have a dual monitor set up here, keyboard, mouse, a printer, or some other things here. You have speakers on there. The least amount of space that your printer takes up, the better off your desk space is gonna be, the cleaner it can be. And the fact that you can have your parts stored right on the printer, you can't go wrong with it. So I think it is super necessary to do that if you have a small space that you need to fit this printer into. This is the smallest form factor any printer I've seen with a huge build volume of 140 by 140 by 200 millimeters. It's awesome. So that's all the mods I've done this printer and my review of it. And I think this is a fantastic printer for the price. When I had originally seen this or when it was originally sent to me, it was down to $145. 
That is just rock bottom. Normally, I see this printer right around $200. That's a still a steal. 140 by 140 by 200 millimeters, that's a great build volume for the first time 3D printer. And I say first time, don't be afraid because I've done all these mods to it. I've done these because I want them to. Get the printer, start printing with it, see what works for you. If you want to make changes, then do it. But don't let anyone else, including me, tell that you must do a upgrade. If you like printing without the part cooling fan and you get acceptable prints for yourself, so be it. I find them to be lacking, so I added that in. It is all up to you, so just make sure no one pushes you to do any upgrades you're not ready to do or that you don't think that you need to. So the fact is, I really do like this printer. Set aside any issues they're having with other companies, you know, uh, they are cloning things from other people, which I don't really agree with. But this printer, it works well. It's a nice small form factor printer, and this would probably be my most highly recommended beginner 3D printer for anyone. You can learn all the different parts. It's a very, it's a fairly well assembled kit. It is a kit, but like the carriage is already put together. Things are already put together for you so you can get up and printing very quickly. It's not as quickly as the ZR10, but that's a huge beast. Uh, this is a great little desktop model for people to have. And again, I highly recommend it. It's awesome. And if you guys wanna check it out, I'll put a fill link down below. If you guys purchased through that, I greatly appreciate it. That helps me ensure that GearBest is getting, you know, something out of my videos and ensures that I can get more products from GearBest because this is not the, you know, the gift that keeps giving. I have to prove that what I do videos for are actually watched. So if you guys purchase that link, I do greatly appreciate it. So thank you for your support on that. And that's it guys. So I really hope you enjoyed this printer review and all my mods to it. I'm gonna do some of the other printers that I've done. I've heavily modded a lot of my printers to fit me for what I want. Uh, there's some people out there that use them stock, but so be it. But again, this is what I wanted to do with it. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give that video a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Either way, tell me in the comments down below what you think about the printer, what you think about my mod, if you have any comments on my mods, things I could change, whatnot. Please, you know, let's start a dialogue down in the comments. If you guys want to stay in tune with any film reviews or 3D print reviews that come out, make sure you become a subscriber. Hit that bell icon, that way you get an email notification when I upload new content on doing videos or live streams. And if you have the YouTube app with notifications enabled, you'll get a push notification if you have those enabled as well on your phone and that you'll know instantly when I upload new content. If you guys want to support me financially, become a Patreon down below. Do me a dollar more on a monthly basis. I greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons, you're awesome. And if you guys want to donate to me other ways, down below is one-time links for Streamlabs or buy me a coffee. Or you can use my fit links when you do your daily shopping. Update your bookmarks with those. A little slice of what you buy comes here to help me with the channel. And I appreciate that kind of support. Again, you can buy this with my fit link down in the description as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time, happy printing.